OK, you're very welcome back uh, to the programme. We've uh, welcomed into studio now Rachel Elliott. Uh, Rachel, thank you very much for joining us. No problem. How are you keeping? Yeah, I'm good. Can't you're complain. Doing well. OK. Um, people may recognise your name or if they're watching on, on, on social media, they may uh, recognise your face. Uh, you had uh, what can only be described as a completely life-changing incident in, in 2018. As much as you're uh, comfortable in explaining, uh, tell us what happened. Um, and the 19th of August um, 2018, I was involved in a car accident in Bundorn. Um, and due to that, when I threw the back window, I um, suffered um, a T9 uh, spinal cord uh, injury. And that's left me paralysed. But um, it's... It's been difficult coming to terms with, but it's um, I'm getting there. Um, it was just a horrific accident. It was, and and you were, um, I mean, you were very very ill at yeah. the time. I mean, I presume there was at least for a period of time a fear that you wouldn't survive. Yeah, well, um, whenever I was being transferred from um, Sligo to Dublin, they told my mum and dad and my family that they didn't know if I was going to make the journey to Dublin. But um, I did, and then I was in a coma then for ten days. Um, they had actually thought that I would have had a brain stem injury because um, of the swelling to my brain. Yeah. But it turned out then that I didn't. Thank God, you know. But um, then they just broke the news. The news to me that um, I wouldn't walk again. Well, there's like a one percent chance of walking again. Yeah, well, you're trying to push those odds. Oh God, I'll not give up until yeah. I am back on my feet. And that's what we're going to talk about. Uh, that's what the whole nature of this conversation is about. Uh, you don't remember, um, is like how much of a period of time have you? Do you not really recall uh, around that time, Rachel? I don't remember. Um, I remember um, being in work. I worked in a bar in Swadland Bar, and I remember being at work putting on my makeup. I'll never forget, there was this old man on the other side of the bar and he was drinking like a pint of Guinness. And um, he was watching me put on my makeup and he's like, where are you running to the night? And I was like, uh, oh, I'm going out. But I couldn't remember anything mm. after that. Um, so we we went to, I left um, a friend of mine's two sisters down in Donegal, but I didn't remember anything like that. So yeah. I think I have, I don't remember anything from about maybe about three o'clock that day, you know. Yeah. So, and so uh, how how far afterwards then do you sort of start having do you remember being in hospital coming out of the coma well, or I remember like um I remember like coming out of the coma, you know, like because in when I was in my coma I was always thinking about this girl that does that does my hair, mm. Becky. Um Clary, she owns her own hairdressers there in Irvingstown and it was weird because we weren't really we weren't friendly at the time. Like I'd went to her the Wednesday before the accident and uh, she had done my hair. And I had brought the wee girl that was in the car with me into the hair salon with me. And um, they were all like, oh, bringing your friend into the hair salon, blah, blah, blah. Um, that was fine. Um, I just kept, like, in my coma, I just kept thinking about her. Like, I had um, pictured that her salon was in was in ICU. Um, but I remember coming out then of the coma, and I remember two, two nurses being at the bottom of the bed, and they were talking about an accident. Mm. And I had said something, and then they just stopped the conversation because there wasn't allowed to be so much activity to my brain at yeah. that stage, you know? And were you taken out of your coma, or did you come out of it naturally? I um, wonder. What was it? You were medically taken out of your coma? Medically. Okay, medically was okay. Um, now, in terms of dealing with it, uh, has it been more difficult because you have one memory of, you know, being at work, putting your makeup on yeah. and a vivid memory and that man having his drink. And then the next is waking from a coma. All that in between. I don't know. Is it, is it better to, not to remember or, or has it been worse? Because it must feel like, you know, your life has changed. You woke up Rest, and everything's yeah. different. Um. When I woke up, you know, like I never remember asking my family why I couldn't move my legs. Mm. Never remember that. If anything, I thought I was I was more interested in my phone, my mm -hmm. hair extensions, because yeah. I was bald at the back, you know. And all I was like, was like well, my, where, where's my hair extensions? You know, where have they gone to? But um, I wanted my phone. And at that stage, my my mum was like, no, you can't have your phone in ICU. And I said, like, mummy, I need to get speaking to Shiva. You know, I do need to get speaking to her. And um, mummy was like, no, 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 no. So my older sister came in and I said, give me your phone. Do I ring her? And she was like, no. 
but I kind of like at the face of her, you know, and I was kind of thinking there was something wrong yeah. then. But um, it was it was definitely hard to come to terms with, you know, like I don't remember. I remember being told I'd never walk in, but I don't remember ever saying to my family, why can I not move my legs? Yeah. You know, I can never remember. You weren't in that, that space at that time, it sounds like, because you were almost sort of in the pre-crash phase because mm. you were thinking about, you know, I your appearance, to, yeah. contacting someone. The penny hadn't clearly dropped then. Um, did it hit you then like a sort of a wrecking ball then all the all the the terrible tragedy of the crash and also its impact on you? Do you know what? I don't think it I don't think it actually hit me until honestly, like obviously I was grieving when I'd heard that my friends had died and like the accident and stuff like that. I was grieving and I was like I was so upset and stuff. But I when I think back now I'd be like I think it just hit me on June past there, you know, where I just literally had a breakdown mental. Like I just couldn't control mm. any emotion. And I think it was because after the court case and stuff, I just was, I just couldn't believe it. It was so like, it was so real. Mm. Like somebody had went to jail for it. You know, we, we had heard the whole facts. And I just think ever since April, I just couldn't co cope with any, um, couldn't cope with any emotion. So then... When I couldn't cope with it, I was like, I need to get help. I just knew it. You know, mm. like there was my sisters, you know, my mum and dad and everyone was ringing me. So they couldn't get me on the phone. They were checking my social media, checking to see when I was last on line and stuff just to see, you know, because they obviously knew that there was mm. something wrong with me. Like I was just having a breakdown and they didn't know if they were. I think it's helpful you recognise that though. Yeah, well, you know, I did. I think I that to. really helped, but a lot of people wouldn't. But no. you knew that something, I knew that there you needed some wrong. intervention. Yeah. It was me crying over a dog. That I was like, mm. oh my good God, there's something wrong with me. Because, you know, I was crying over real stupid stuff. Yeah, I know. <laughs> and but at least you, you spotted it. And also, too, um, you have to look after yourself. But you know the impact this has had on your, your sisters and your family and what they're going through. And your son Ronnie, too, three at the mm -hmm. time. You know, there's an awful lot going on there, uh, having to process your emotions as to how you might feel towards the driver, for example. Or, you know what I'm on about? There's just no end to, to what you're having to cope with. Um, having your son, Ronnie, um, how was that difficult to sort of... I mean, he's so young uh, and the, children are so adaptable, but there's still a pressure on you to, ma to make it as manageable for him as possible, presumably, too. At the start, it was difficult, but I think now, because I am so independent... You know, I don't need, like, as I said, everybody, there's only, you know, the only difference between me and you is that you're standing and I'm sitting. Like, I can handle Ronnie no problem now. Whereas at the start, I would have had my family staying with me and helping me look after yeah. him. Whereas now it's just me and him. And it's brought me and him such a real good, like, close relationship because he understands. He's the your whole, body now. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and he, except if I got out of the shower, he would be coming after me with my wheelchair. Mm. And he'd put it on one side of the bed. I'd get in off the shower chair to the into my bed and then he'd be away of the shower chair back into the bathroom so he's really adjusting to it too but he does still say like you know I was slagging him one day about going out for a beer with him and his friends when he's older and he says no mommy no and I says um, no I am I'm, I'm coming out with you and um, he was like no and I goes and you can push mommy about and he goes no mommy you'll be walking by then so yeah. he's never give up hope either that I will walk again you know yeah and that is your that Focus is, now. Yes. This is this is mission one at the moment. I'm uh, not going to stop. I don't. Well, I don't care if it takes me years. I am going to walk again. Yeah. What I'm is the practicalities of you being able to walk? Because the 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 paralysis can't be reversed. So you have to learn to walk a different way. Is that the the way it is? Yeah. Well, like for in order for me to like walk, it has to start from like here down. Mm. Like so, so you so need it's just from the belly button area yeah. down. Yeah. So like you know, I've already regained. You know, like feeling back on my stomach. You know, I've got. Um, fit to use my muscles and all in my stomach, you know, so, like that has been progressed now from maybe the last four or five months, you know, and that's mm. been going to private physiotherapist and like losing weight, and then I'm flat out training with a PT, um, the smart gym and listen ski. So I go to PT three times a week, and then I also go to Belfast once a week for mm -hmm. physio. But now I was down getting measured for calibers and um. I, they came and they just need a wee bit of like adjustment so um, they've been sent away for another two weeks then they come back to see if they're ready for me to um, walk in and then they go back for another two weeks so calipers would give a bit of rigidity is that is that calipers will like you'll, you'll not be walking properly in them like you know but you will be like lifting your hip you know like hinging like, I so, get you yeah, you yeah. know like some people can walk on it with crutches and then some people use the simmer frame but 
my aim is for the crutches, but she says to me, you know, Rachel, we'll the Zimmer frame first, and then we'll go on to that. But is it kind of a bit where whatever they tell you, you're gonna you're gonna well, I'm actually gonna go further than that. Yeah, I am. Yeah, that's yeah. that's you want to say, uh, not that they don't support you and and want the best for you, but you're just gonna say, well, that's what you think medically. This is what I'm capable of. But I I think like it took, you know, like there like it'll be four years now in August, and I think it took me three years to get used to like my grief and stuff like mm. that and you know I didn't I didn't really care about like doing exercise or wanting to get better and now it's just this year I'm just like that's it I'm not being in the wheelchair so you had to get yourself did you in, in the best emotional space that you can and now you might be there it's always an ongoing uh, journey of course for all of us uh, but now you can focus more on the physical element of it oh god yeah, yeah. because my, like it was my mental health that deteriorated last Father's Day and I just was like you know, I, I need help. So, you know, I have like a mental health nurse. You know, I see a psychiatrist. There's good and bad days too, presumably. Oh, God, yeah. yeah. Like the last couple of days have been tough, but today I'm in great form then. Good. You know, like it's just, it's just one of them days. You just have to take it. Right, so... um you are um, firstly you're 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 on TikTok now. You're getting a lot of traction on there. Why did you go down that route? Um, because I mean, some people you know sort of withdraw into a shell and want to do it very privately. And I'm not saying you're doing everything publicly, but you know, why did you decide to sort of uh, jump on the the TikTok train, so to speak? It was actually my counselor had says to me, you know, Rachel, I think you would you could really help a lot of people, and I yeah. was like, no. How could and she I? was yeah. like, yeah. I think you could. So one day I was on TikTok. And like my sister and all used to always be on. I'd be like, what are you on that for? But I had just created an account just to view like other people's. So I was like, this one day I was like, you know what? I will. I'll just say something. So then it just kind of, whoa, it's went mad with the, yeah. with the whole followers and stuff. And then um, it's been really good. You know, but like I talk about everything. Like I be completely honest about it. You know, I tell them the good days, the bad days. Mm. You know, I tell them about my past. I tell them go and look at it. You know, mm. I, you know, that's in my past. I can't change anything. So, like, all that matters now is what I'm doing in the future. But people, yeah. you do get trolls and stuff on it. Well, I mean, listen, unfortunately, like that is social media. But um, I mean, obviously, then people are going to message you, right? Because what you're going through or what you've been through in your life and how you're dealing with it. You know, it relate. Other people can relate to that, even if they haven't gone through yeah. the same thing. The amount of people that wrote to me. That's about what it I was going to say. How does that feel when you you realise that you're touching people? You know, even in what you're dealing with, people are saying, right, you know, actually, you're an inspiration, or this is what you're doing for me. Did it take a while to to, to sort of go, well, what are they? No, well, like look, people would be writing to me. Like there was one person wrote to me about their their son being in a wheelchair, and like they showed them they showed him the video of me getting in and out of the car. And I was like, imagine I've helped one person. So then there was another woman who wrote to me, another one. They were like, you know, I'm going to end up in a wheelchair and this is what the doctor said to me and blah, blah, blah. And I was like, well, you know what? You know, it does take time to get used to. I don't think you ever accept it. Mm. But like, it's one of these things. You either make the most of it or you're just going to be completely depressed. Like, so I just I just tell them that everybody's different and everybody's um, emotions is different. But, mm. you know, there is good days and there is bad days. Like, I do still get my bad days. Yeah. And and uh, how do you deal with the um, the comments? You might get them on TikTok. Uh, you know, there are you know professional what? trolls and that's what they do. For some reason, that's how they get by, which is in terribly, terribly dark and sad. But, you know, maybe people might uh, comment on your GoFundMe page or what. Like, Yeah. But you know what? I'm. It weighs I you down, though, doesn't it? Or it can it, do. Maybe... Do you know what? It does and it doesn't. I actually was talking to my cousin last night about this. I was like, you know what? There is nothing anybody can say mm. to me that would annoy me. Somebody called me a handicap a couple of days ago. Yeah. And I just was like, I, if you want to see, like, yeah. that's his But these nasty you. people that are capable of this, though, it doesn't matter what status you have. Nope. Whether, you know, They will find something that they think will hurt you. Yeah. And that's what they will focus on. It could be a chair. Or it could be your looks, it could be whatever it might be. And that's just, it do, unfortunately, that is just the way it is. And there's very little the these companies seem to do to try and moderate that, really, in truth. But, like, Greg, if I had been last June and somebody had said something to me like that, I'd have been yeah. like, oh, my God, I can't cope with this. But mm. see, now i just be like, whatever. Like, if that, that's your opinion. Yeah. If that's how you feel, then what can you do? I think it says an awful lot more about them than it might you. I've got stronger, like I'm yeah. fit to take on anything. Right, so let's, uh, you, you, you um, as well as sort of helping people, reaching out, and the helping bit sort of happened. I don't think that was necessarily your intention, but intention, but it's happened, yes. uh, which I can understand fully. Um, also, to you've set up a GoFundMe page. Now, what's the purpose of 
Uh, it's Rachel's Journey, by the way, if you want to search on GoFundMe. Uh, what um, are you fundraising for specifically? I want the I want to get the carbon fibre calibers. The lighter. Yeah. The light, the, lightness and strength, presumably. It is because the carbon fibre ones would be kind of ones that you could take out in public. Now, the NHS ones, they are OK, but they're very like... They're cheap, the, like they're just yeah, yeah. they're bog standard. Yeah. But um, not only that, there, Greg. I'm going to be travelling to Belfast four times a week, you know, and like with fuel and stuff. Obviously, I don't have a lot of money. You know, I'm a single mum. You know, um, nothing's happened with the whole compensation thing yet, and it's just like you know to help me even you know get down there. You know, even to stay away for a night down there instead mm. of travelling up and down four times a week. Um, but my main my main like aim is for the calibers like I would love the carbon fibre ones but they're just so expensive yeah. you know and you're just asking people if they enjoy your TikToks or, or they want to help or they've got a, a few spare euro that would make a big difference to you um, you know yeah but like it, I don't want anyone to feel like they have to you know I just no you know, that's clear and it's know. always a choice you're not guilting anyone no. to do it if they want to and contribute to, to, to improving your life and uh, you know, obviously, too, your son would love to see you. Yeah. Uh, oh, God. But I think that's... Uh, I was on a standing frame yesterday and he was like, Mommy, look it, you're, you're standing up. Yeah. You know, he was so he was so chuffed. You talked about feeling coming back, you know. Um, yes. Is there a possibility that over time with the right rehab that maybe, you know, some of, of, of what's happened to you might be reversed more? Well... I, my private physio, like, she was like, oh, my God, like, I've been going to her for, like, three years. And she was like, Jesus, this is the most that you have, like, done. And, like, she was quite shocked. So she wasn't, yeah, brilliant. she was like, like, you know, like, the whole weight loss thing and, like, um, like me tensing my muscles and stuff was something I could never do. And, like, I was like, do you think it could all come back? And she was like, never say never. Yeah, she has to manage your expectations, too. She just you keeps know? working yeah. with me and she just says... Who's to, say? Who's to say? Do you have a, a a a thing that you want to achieve, or um, I, I mean, I know it's about walking, but is there something beyond that? Or I I would love to walk, but I also love I love helping other people. Yeah, like I if I could, you know, if there was like one of my TikToks and it was only one person that helped, then that there is all that matters. I mm. don't want anybody to like suffer alone or be depressed lying in their bed like I want somebody to be fit to speak to me and you know tell me how they're feeling if I can help them any way I will um I just I just wouldn't wish this on anyone and if I if I'm if I can help anybody in any way I will all right brilliant okay so if you um are inspired uh, by Rachel's uh, story you can support Rachel in her journey um, and you can go on to GoFundMe, search Rachel's journey. It's the easiest way. Uh, or maybe your social media, presumably it's linked there, uh, Rachel. Um, where are you? You're on TikTok? I'm on TikTok. I'm not on any other social media. I went off that. I'm never going back on Why that. is that? I couldn't cope with, you yeah. know, um, Facebook. Um, after the court, there was a lot of nasty comments. It's too community oriented, not yeah. community orientated, but without going into the nitty gritties as a, a sort of a global semi uh, anonymous, not anonymous, but it's not about friends and connections and all that Do kind you know, of stuff that you get on. It just was, it was horrible. People saying, you know, how can you forgive somebody that ruined your life? And I just thought, you know what, I don't need all that. But that's for stronger. you though, isn't it? It's, it's mm. a decision you've made. Yeah, like I says till like before we went into the court, that fella that is in jail, I he says to me, "Am I've destroyed your life?" And I says, "No, you haven't. Mm. No, you haven't. My life has changed, and like that's all it is. It's changed. Yeah. There's no difference between me and you. Only you're standing, and, and I'm in the chair." Yeah, and I think everyone's, and it's easy easier said than done, but everybody's experience or grief or loss or how it impacts their life, it, it's it's how you feel personally, and we can't all think the same. We can't. We're not condition to do so so if this is how you're living your life and how you want to proceed with it I can't deal you, you, with being you just have to I can't deal with being angry you have to be you at this stage can't you yeah I can't, can't you? I can't I can't deal with being angry and I just want to forgive and forget and mm. just that's just my like there's whole, being angry with somebody is only doing me harm so mm. I don't be angry do you, are you all. happy with how you're touching people now through the social media is that the thing the way to do it? You, have you started saying I wonder maybe I could do something more formal courses or, or well, whatever well that's what or? we're kind of hoping for like you know I can maybe do um, more things like even speak to more people um, even like um, I was on Zoom to um, a school in Wexford you know and mm. if I can help anyone I will you know especially like children that you know like students that 
I'd be like, think before you get into a car that's overloaded. Think before you do anything. Yeah. You know, think before you get into a, a car with somebody drink driving. You know, like it's just... It's interesting because that was what the focus of the bank holiday message was to try and put a bit of onus on to not just the driver but the passenger as well and it all yeah. kind of ties in. Listen, the very uh, best of luck with everything uh, going forward. I, Thank you. I think you're going to achieve what you want to achieve. I think that's pretty clear. And I uh, hope you have more good days than bad days going forward. Thanks very much. Uh, I think you've very supportive family. I think that's pretty clear too. Yes. Which if, and Ronnie's well sounds pretty Maybe supportive. Maybe sister's as well. my rock. She's, She's looking at me here. <laughs> is your rock and camera woman? All, she all is. in the. Yeah. <laughs> Have you yeah. ever stayed quiet for this long? I wondered. Would you be Honestly, a chatter? When she's here, you don't stay. Quiet. <laughs> okay. It's all about me. <laughs> Listen. Don't ask about our injuries. So you'll hear them too. Okay. Well, maybe do another interview on that one. <laughs> Listen. Um, continued success in the road to recovery, as I say. Hopefully, more uh, good days than bad days. And uh, if people want to help you, search uh, Rachel's Journey on GoFundMe, and uh, you'll find the story there. But also, if you want to jump on TikTok, what's your handle on TikTok? Uh, oh, what do you? What's your, is it? Rachel Elliott. Let's go and check here. Um, well, we'll uh, find that out. I'll announce that later. Oh, I don't oh. know what it is. Now oh, she's just, it just scrolling TikTok. It's Rachel Elliott 03. <laughs> <laughs> you mean there's two more? Okay. Uh, we'll be back uh, with more, in fact, the news after uh, the break. But for now, Rachel Elliott and Sister, thank you very much. You're right.